Mm, that hurts. That banana hurts. Pretty epic views, right? I could honestly get used to waking up to this every single morning. I'm gonna place you guys down here because I don't want to be holding you up and carrying you. I hope I'm in the frame. All right, so first and foremost, before I start off this vlog, make sure you guys check out my previous vlog, Larke Pass. I'm gonna link it up above or down below. Make sure you give that video a big thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel for more videos like that because I, that was a tough pass. I'm not gonna lie, very, very tough pass, but I worked through it and I made sure that I got to share the adventure with you guys. Like carrying all my equipment up to the pass, up to the summit to make sure I capture every single moment, not every single moment, but most of the moments during that pass and yes i'm not going to be afraid to ask for a like and subscribe to my channel like i said if you're not part if you're not a part of the youtube fan yet make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and another shameless plug if you guys don't know it's been it's been really cold here in the himalayas bracing through cold nights for sure but the 778 co toque has been keeping me warm yes i know shameless plug this is my own clothing line make sure you guys check it out link is going to be in the description box down below so make sure you support your boy make sure you guys check out the 778 co clothing brand we're doing amazing things anyways the plan for today is enough shameless plugs well anyways i can do whatever i want this is my channel but the plan for today is I'm heading down to Doripani. It's gonna be another descent. I'm currently in Goa, and unfortunately, there, there's been a power outage ever since I got here. And so, I'm running low on my batteries for my camera gear, as well, well, pretty much all my electronics, which is 60% of what I'm carrying during this trip. And so, hopefully, I've been told that there's gonna be power outlets, and that there's gonna be power and all that in Doripani so hopefully I can charge everything because I also haven't backed up any of my photos and videos in the past three days and that to me is playing with fire because I like to back up my files in at least two places just because just because that's just how it is I I am I, I haven't backed up any of the files in the past three days so yes I'm I'm literally playing with fire here but hopefully once I get to Doripani I'm able to charge everything and also back up the files because that's very very important to me but that's the plan for today and i'm just gonna pack up my things and then head down to Doripani. it should take about three to four hours it's gonna be another easy i wouldn't say easy well yeah it's one of the easier days for today as compared to the other days i guess so to speak just because it's mostly a descent today and Doripani, i believe is about 1800 meters or 1900 meters and then after Doripani, it's gonna be a steady incline after that. So this is the last descend for the next week at least for me. So I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure I enjoy it. But in the meantime, I'm gonna soak in these views for the next couple of minutes. Passing through a village right now called Tiliji. Man, I can get lost here. Oh, this way. It's so cool being here. There's basically a bunch of homes here, and it's so colorful. It's so vibrant. All right. So I've been on the trail for a good two and a half hours now, and Wait, no, I'm lying. An hour and a half, because I started at 9, and right now it's 
and an hour and a half on the trail. And I think, I'm taking a wild guess here. I think I see Doripani. And if I'm not mistaken, it's not that far away because I can see it from over here. Hold on, let me just, let me just get through this rocky part first. Oh, of course, she's being blocked by trees. I'm gonna stop the video. I'm gonna go past this tree and I'm gonna show you guys what I think is probably, potentially, Dorepani. So just passing through these trees that were blocking it earlier. And I think that's Dorepani right there. Taking a wild guess here. But from here, I don't think it should be any more than, it should be less than an hour from here at least, from what I can see. So fairly short day, if that is Dorepani. I am really hoping it is though, because I really, really need to charge my batteries. So it's really close. I think if anything, it should be half an hour away, but less than half, not an hour, because I can see it fairly clearly from here. As I'm approaching this village, it's not Dorepani yet. I lied. It says Sonche or Sonche. I don't know how to pronounce it, but. Okay, random, but look at this. This is Mary J aka marijuana they have these all over nepal but of course it's illegal in fact if you're caught with with this in your pockets or you know consuming it you can go to jail for it penalties are huge apparently that's what i heard but it's just it's so random to see marijuana growing on the trails of nepal you know So that little village that I passed by, that's actually part of Dorepani. But instead of going through that village, the bridge that crosses over to Dorepani had actually been run down by the flood or the river, sorry. And so I've had to go around this way and back around. I did a loop to end up here so that I can end up over in that area, because that's Darapani. So it would have taken a much shorter time from where I was to get to Darapani, but because of the bridge being run down by the river or the flood not too long ago, as I was told by one of the locals, I've had to go around and it's added a bit more time. It's added, okay, I'm downplaying it. It's been an hour now since I've had to make this loop. But nonetheless, I'm almost there. And there's a, there's a checkpoint in Dadapani that you have to go through. And so I couldn't go to the next village anyways, because to go to the next village is that way. And now I'm heading downhill. And then tomorrow I have to go uphill to go to that village. But I can't skip Dorapani because there's a checkpoint to exit Manaslu. Uh, and as well as check in for the Annapurna. This this region. Okay. Also here, there's apparently four hotels, like four or five hotels that used to be in this area, but because of the flood, it's been demolished. Very, very unfortunate. But I am now in Dharapani. This is the place for the night. Look at this, the cushion. Got the blankies, blankets. Most importantly, I have this and it actually works. That's a plus. I'm gonna put my camera down, get settled in, order some lunch and then charge all of my things because I'm running low on, in terms of my battery equipment and all that stuff, so. I've got power and lights on. So that means there's no blackout for the night, which is a nice change up here in the Himalayas, but 
after lunch, I was just charging a bunch of my stuff, as you can see. And then I had dinner. And then because there's strong Wi-Fi here in Darapani, I took advantage of that, just messaging people back home, letting them know that, you know, I'm all good up here. But tomorrow I'm going to Chame, I believe is how you pronounce it. And I'm currently at Darapani at 1,860 meters. And Chame, I believe, is 2,500 meters. I'm gonna double check. I believe it's 2,590 is the height or the elevation of the village. Let me just double check. No, I'm wrong. 2,650 meters. So that means I'll be making about a 700 meter or so elevation gain tomorrow. And it should be about five to six hours or so. But I'm just gonna cut the vlog here because it's it's fairly late and I wanna sleep in, wake up early, and then start my day off to do this trek tomorrow to Chame. But because today was fairly uneventful, I'm just gonna combine the two vlogs from today and then tomorrow as well. So that is just gonna be this one because it'll be too short if I just do this as a one vlog. So why don't we just fast forward to the next day? Top of the morning to ya. I am currently on my way to another village called Chame. I think it's how you pronounce it, or Chame. I don't know, but I just left Dorepani about 10 minutes ago and had breakfast, enjoyed a little nice sunrise, and now I'm enjoying hills for as a second breakfast. But it should be about five to six hours today or so, hopefully less, but the sun is out again behind me. It's a beautiful day, can't complain. It's a peaceful trail, very dusty though. But yeah, having heading over to Chame or Chame, however you pronounce it, and uh, before, before we start off this vlog, I just want you guys to give this video a big thumbs up already. Subscribe to my channel. Be a part of the YouTube fam if you're not a part of the YouTube fam yet. And I gotta catch my breath. It's always like the first 15 or 20 minutes when you go up trekking, when you're breathing the hardest, you know? So you know what? I'm gonna put my camera down. Make sure you give this video a like subscribe to my channel and comment down below where are you watching this from let's take a little break i love nepalese food but one thing i miss fruits and once you see a fruit stand on the trail you take it i got it from a lady over there and I was just I gotta have me some fruits you know taking a little fruit break Bye. all right so this sign says Manang is that way I really don't know what's here but I'm gonna go by the sign because Chame is actually before Manang, so I'm thinking it will be up this way. It makes sense anyways because this is a trail. And you know what? I always trust my gut when I'm on the trail. So I'm gonna head up this way. I think this is for cars to, to go through Manang. And this is the actual trail. This is a foot traffic, so to speak. So I don't know, but we'll see. I thought this was the right way because over here the sign says Manang pointing towards the bridge. So I did go cross over the bridge, but once I got over to that area, there was no path whatsoever and it's just a bunch of abandoned things and chopped up wood, nothing more. There was no path whatsoever, so I had to go back. I think this is the way 
towards Chame. It's just, I haven't seen anyone for the past couple of hours, so I can't really ask where I'm going. And so I'm gonna have to just trust my gut and go this way. Hopefully I'm going the right way. So I met these two locals and I was heading up that way. Luckily they were going down this way and I asked them where Chame was and they said this way. So I was actually going the right way the first time. So I'm just following them at the moment. Okay, so this map says Chame is over this way. And well, essentially I'm here right now. So all I gotta do is just head on straight that way. And that's towards Chame. Thank God for this map. That's, that's important right there. Got the hooks for my clothes, also very important. Anyways, I got here in about four and a half hours or so, so fairly fast, but I'm gonna get settled in and I'm gonna order some lunch because I'm hungry. But yeah, I'm just gonna be staying here in Chami for the night and then tomorrow I'm heading over to Pisang, I believe it's how you pronounce it. And that should be another four or five hours away from here. So 